Chapter 18 of Famous Men of the Middle Ages. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Alec Datesman. Famous Men of the Middle Ages by John H. Haran and A. B. Poland. Chapter 18 The Cid. Late one sunny afternoon, one and twenty knights were riding along the highway in the northern part of Spain. As they were passing a deep mire, they heard cries for help, and, turning, saw a poor leper who was sinking in the mud. One of the knights, a handsome young man, was touched by the cries. He dismounted, rescued the poor fellow, took him upon his own horse, and thus the two rode to the inn. The other knights wondered at this. When they reached the inn where they were to stop for the night, they wondered still more, for their companion gave the leper a seat next to himself at the table. After supper, the knight shared his own bed with the leper. If the knight had not done this, the leper would have been driven out of the town, with nothing to eat, and no place in which to sleep. At midnight, while the young man was fast asleep, the leper breathed upon his back. This awakened the knight, who turned quickly in his bed, and found that the leper was gone. The knight called for a light and searched, but in vain. While he was wondering about what had happened, a man in shining garments appeared before him and said, Rodrigo, art thou asleep or awake? The knight answered, I am awake, but who art thou that bringest such brightness? The vision replied, I am Saint Lazarus, the leper to whom thou wast so kind. Because I have breathed upon thee, thou shalt accomplish whatever thou shalt undertake, in peace or in battle. All shall honor thee. Therefore, go on and evermore do good. With that the vision vanished. The promise of St. Lazarus was fulfilled. In time, young Rodrigo became the great hero of Spain. The Spaniards called him the Campeador, or Champion. The Saracens called him the Cid, or Lord. His real name was Rodrigo Diaz de Bivar, but he is usually spoken of as the Cid. The Goths, after the death of Alaric, had taken Spain away from the Romans. The Saracens, or, as they were usually called, the Moors, had crossed the sea from Africa, and in turn had taken Spain from the Goths. In the time of Charles Martel, the Goths had lost all Spain except the small mountain district in the northern part. In the time of the Cid, the Goths, now called Spaniards, had driven the Moors down to about the middle of Spain. War went on all the time between the two races, and many men spent their lives in fighting. The Spanish part of the country then comprised the kingdoms of Castile, Leon, Aragon, and others. The Cid was a subject of Fernando of Castile. Fernando had a dispute with the king of Aragon about a city which each claimed. They agreed to decide the matter by a combat. Each was to choose a champion. The champions were to fight, and the king whose champion won was to have the city. Fernando chose the Cid, and though the other champion was called the bravest knight in Spain, the youthful warrior vanquished him. When Alonso, a son of Fernando, succeeded to the throne, he became angry with the Cid with just cause, and banished him from Christian Spain. The Cid was in need of some money, so he filled two chests with sand, and sent word to two wealthy money-lenders that he wished to borrow six hundred Spanish marks, about two thousand dollars, and would put into their hands his treasures of silver and gold, which were packed in two chests. But the money-lenders must solemnly swear not to open the chests until a full year had passed. To this they gladly agreed. They took the chests and loaned him six hundred marks. The Cid was now ready for his journey. Three hundred of his knights went into banishment with him. They crossed the mountains and entered the land of the Moors. Soon they reached the town of Alcocer, and after a siege captured it and lived in it. Then the Moorish king of Valencia ordered two chiefs to take three thousand horsemen, recapture the town, and bring the Cid alive to him. So the Cid and his men were shut up in Alcocer and besieged. Famine threatened them, and they determined to cut their way through the army of the Moors. Suddenly and swiftly they poured from the gate of Alcocer, and a terrible battle was fought. The two Moorish chiefs were taken prisoners, and thirteen hundred of their men were killed in the battle. The Cid then became a vassal of the Moorish king of Saragossa. After a while Alfonso recalled the Cid from banishment, and gave him seven castles and the lands adjoining them. He needed the Cid's help in the greatest of all his plans against the Moors. He was determined to capture Toledo. He attacked it with a large army, in which there were soldiers from many foreign lands. The Cid is said to have been the commander. After a long siege the city fell, and the victorious army marched across the great bridge built by the Moors, which you would cross today if you went to Toledo. 
Valencia was one of the largest and richest cities in Moorish Spain. It was strongly fortified, but the Cid determined to attack it. The plain about the city was irrigated by streams that came down from the neighboring hills. To prevent the Cid's army from coming near the city, the Saracens flooded the plain. But the Cid camped on high ground above the plain, and from that point besieged the city. Food became very scarce in Valencia. Wheat, barley, and cheese were all so dear that none but the rich could buy them. People ate horses, dogs, cats, and mice, until in the whole city only three horses and a mule were left alive. Then, on the 15th of June, 1094, the governor went to the camp of the Cid and delivered to him the keys of the city. The Cid placed his men in all of the forts and took the citadel as his own dwelling. His banner floated from the towers. He called himself the Prince of Valencia. When the King of Morocco heard of this, he raised an army of 50,000 men. They crossed from Africa to Spain and laid siege to Valencia. But the Cid with his men made a sudden sally and routed them and pursued them for miles. It is said that 15,000 soldiers were drowned in the river Guadalquivar, which they tried to cross. The Cid was at the height of his power and lived in great magnificence. One of the first things he did was to repay the two friends who had lent him the 600 marks. He was kind and just to the Saracens who had become his subjects. They were allowed to have their mosques and to worship God as they thought right. In time, the Cid's health began to fail. He could lead his men forth to battle no more. He sent an army against the Moors but it was so completely routed that few of his men came back to tell the tale. It is said by a Moorish writer that, when the runaways reached him, the Cid died of rage. There is a legend that shortly before he died, he saw a vision of St. Peter, who told him that he should gain a victory over the Saracens after his death. So the Cid gave orders that his body should be embalmed. It was so well preserved that it seemed alive. It was clothed in a coat of mail, and the sword that had won so many battles was placed in the hand. Then it was mounted upon the Cid's favorite horse, and fastened to the saddle, and at midnight was borne out of the gate of Valencia with a guard of a thousand knights. All silently they marched to a spot where the Moorish king, with thirty-six chieftains, lay encamped, and at daylight the knights of the Cid made a sudden attack. The king awoke. It seemed to him that there were coming against him full seventy thousand knights, all dressed in robes as white as snow, and before them rode a knight, taller than all the rest holding in his left hand a snow-white banner, and in the other a sword which seemed a fire. So afraid were the Moorish chief and his men that they fled to the sea, and twenty thousand of them were drowned as they tried to reach their ships. There is a Latin inscription near the tomb of the Cid, which may be translated, Brave and unconquered, famous in triumphs of war, and closed in this tomb lies Roderick the Great of Bivar. End of chapter 18 Recorded by Alec Datesman Brooklyn, New York.